The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. If you want an oil that'll help you blend the finest homemade salad dressings, I hope you'll try Superfined Craft Oil. Superfining makes it a lighter-bodied oil, and that's important because lighter body means craft oil blends better with other dressing ingredients and blends better into all kinds of baking doughs and batters. Tomorrow, get the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings and baking, lighter-bodied craft oil. Well, this is one of those times when the work is piled up in the water commissioner's office to the point where the great Gildersleeve can't find enough hours in the day to handle it. So, he left the office at 4 o'clock, and he's going to take care of it tomorrow. Oh, boy, George, this fire feels good. Wish I had this fireplace at the office. Is that you, old Miss Gildersleeve? Yes, Bertie. I didn't hear you come in. The mayor didn't hear me leave, either. <laughs> no, sir. What are we having for dinner, Bertie? Dinner? Mr. Gildersleeve is just 4.30. Well, I'm getting a little hungry. When you go full tilt the way I do, you have to keep stoking the furnace. Yes, sir. I made a real good cake this morning. Oh? I'll bring you some of that to tide you over. Fine, Bertie. Yeah, I can eat a piece of cake if I skip something for dinner. Like a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad Grace has a fireplace. When I go over tonight, I think I'll suggest that we just sit and toast our tootsies. Hi, Aunt. Well, hello, Leroy. How was school today? Just like it is every other day. Yes, yes. Isn't it, Leroy? Hi, Bertie. What do you got there? Piece of cake for your uncle. It looks very appetizing, Bertie. Thank you, sir. That's my new recipe. Hey, can I have some? Never tasted any like that. What happened to that piece of cake I put in your lunchbox this morning, Leroy? I gave it to Mickey. Who's Mickey? Sheila's brother. Who's Sheila? Mickey's sister. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Sheila's the little girl Leroy's been shining up to lately. That's why he's beating around the bush. Is that right, Leroy? (laughs) (laughs) Must be right. Leroy, I sure wish you hadn't given that Mickey your cake. Well, gosh, what are you going to do when he asks for it? Right in front of Sheila. That Mickey's always getting things from you. Watch this. Well, I'll go get you another piece of cake this time. But you watch that Mickey with my cake. Okay. Unc, I got a lot of schoolwork to do. Can I borrow your fountain pen? Yes, but where's the one I gave you? Mickey's got it. (laughs) Why did you let him take your fountain pen? He wanted to copy my homework. (laughs) <laughs> Leroy, I've got a feeling that boy's taking advantage of you well, He likes me, he says I'm a good sport You can be too good Open your eyes Can't you see he's using you? Oh, gosh Yeah, I can spot those fellows a mile off You never find one of those spongers getting the best of me The idea of this boy eating your cake and getting your pen all in the same day He's had the pen for a week A week? Leroy Yeah? This has gone far enough You hop on your bicycle right over to Mickey's and get your fountain pen. Oh, Unc, I can't do that. Why can't you? He's got my bike. (laughs) I don't like to jump on Leroy. I hate to see him be such an easy mark. It's ridiculous. Oh, well. From the ridiculous to the sublime. Grace seemed awfully excited when I talked to her on the phone. I wonder why. Just about me, I guess. I can hear those high heels clicking to the door. What a girl. Drop Morton, come in. Hello, Grace. I could hardly wait for you to come over. Well, I could hardly wait to get here. I have the most wonderful surprise for you. Good. Wonderful evening for a surprise. Just you, me, and the fire. Uh Oh, Grace. Who's that in the next room? 
He's the surprise. Hmm? <laughs> Come along, Throckmorton. I want you to meet my brother. Oh, your brother. <laughs> Sidney, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. So yours, Throckmorton. Yes, me. How do you do, Mr. Tuttle? Grace has told me a lot about you. <laughs> oh? I was going to town to the telegraph office to send a few wires, but when Grace said you were coming over, I said, Grace, I want to wait and meet Commissioner Gildersleeve. <laughs> Throckmorton, Mr. Tuttle. My friends call me Sidney. Oh, thanks, Sidney. <laughs> well, why don't we sit down? Good idea. You know, sis, perhaps I shouldn't say this in front of Throckmorton, but I like the cut of his jib. Ah. Uh, Sidney, why don't you take the easy chair? Thank you. I didn't know you were coming to town. Grace, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know it either. Sidney never tells me anything. He's so busy. Well, I hate to bother people, and it's just by the merest chance that I happen to be here. I guess if Sidney hadn't been on his way to Palm Beach, I wouldn't have seen him for another five years. Is that so? What do you expect to do in Palm Beach? The same thing I did in Cincinnati. Oh. Good. Big corporations keep moving Sydney around. Sounds pretty important. Well, after all, we have to have intermediaries and correlators. Intermediary Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Of course, Summerfield's a little small for that sort of thing. Already, Sydney's fallen in love with Summerfield. Yes, I make decisions quickly about places and people. Oh, me too. Uh, Throckmorton, from the cigars sticking out of your pocket, I see you smoke. Yes. Grace, I wish I'd known. I would have bought some cigars for Throckmorton. Well, thanks for the thought. Here, have one of mine. If you insist, thanks. My pleasure. Right? After you. Oh, no. Be my guest. <laughs> if you insist. Here's another ashtray, boys. Fine, sis. Say, hey, it's great to relax. Uh, Sidney, if you have a lot of telegrams to send, don't you think you'd better see about them? I haven't forgotten them. You send them tonight, you'll get the cheap rate. It's not that you'd be interested in anything cheap. Why don't you just phone them in? Oh, sis, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have them charged on your phone bill. Isn't he considerate, Throckmorton? Yes, he is. Well, I'll send the wires in the morning. I'd much rather stay here and talk to Throckmorton. Really? Well, I'm flattered. Why, you two talk. I'll go make some cocoa. Sounds good. She's quite a girl, Sidney. Well, she's a lucky girl. Lucky? Now that you and I have met Throckmorton, I think I'll take it upon myself to remind sis that there aren't many eligible bachelors of your caliber. Well. <laughs> that is, if you don't mind, a little pat on the back. Oh, no. Grateful for it. Fine cigar, Throckmorton. Yeah, it's been my favorite brand for years. You're an excellent judge of tobacco. Say, as long as I'm not going downtown this evening, I might just borrow another cigar to tide me over, if you don't mind. You certainly not. Here, take two. All right, I will. Since I don't know where to buy these. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll bring you a box. More coffee, Mr. Gilsey? No, thank you, Bertie. My George, that was a fine breakfast. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I ate 14 buckwheat. Hey, Leroy, look around and see if you can find me a cigar, will you? Okay. Yeah, I'll just glance through the paper here. The humidor's empty. You had a whole po pocket full of cigars last night. Well, over at Miss Tuttle's last night, we smoked them. You mean Miss Tuttle smokes cigars? <laughs> <laughs> no, Leroy, her brother is visiting her. Yeah? He's a big shot correlator from Cincinnati on his way to Palm Beach to intermediate something. I, I didn't know Miss Tuttle had a brother. Yes, he's a wonderful fellow. We hit it off right away. Of course, that pleased Grace. Oh, yes, sir. If you like the sister, it's real good insurance to stand in with the brother. Well, I'd like this fellow anyway. Sidney's real quality. Sidney, huh? Yep. By the way, Leroy, we'd better get going. I told Sidney I'd meet him this morning and introduce him around City Hall. Okay. Save the paper, Bertie. I'll read it tonight. Yes, sir. Don't forget your lunch pail, Leroy. I got it. Hey, Unc. Yes, my boy? You were lecturing me about Mickey having my fountain pen on my bike. Well, I got them both back. Good. 
From now on, don't let people talk you out of things. Don't worry. I've learned my lesson. Good boy. Hey, why don't we go up in the garage? Why are we standing here on the curb? We're waiting for Sidney to pick us up. What? Last night I loaned him my car. What a character! <laughs> Sidney certainly made a good impression around City Hall this morning. And he insisted I meet him for lunch. Well, yeah, it'd be a good chance to introduce him to Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, oh, Mr. Jonas Lee. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Peavy, we're going to have lunch with you today. Very okay, well. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. Oh, how do you do? Who are you talking to? He isn't here yet. Well, I didn't see anybody, but I wasn't going to say anything if you didn't. <laughs> what? He could be invisible. Yes, yes. You've been reading too many of your own comic books. <laughs> Maybe I have. Who, who is this friend of yours, Mr. Gildersleeve? Miss Tuttle's brother, Sidney. Oh, that's quite a coincidence. What's a coincidence? We once had a cat named Sidney. Oh? Then he had kittens and we changed it to Cynthia. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What are you serving for lunch, Peavy? I imagine he's pretty particular. Well, I'm a little particular myself. I may not even want to serve him. No, Peavy, you'll like it. He should be along in my car any minute. You've got your car, have you? Yeah, I met him only last night and already a fast friendship has developed. If he's borrowed your car already, it is a fast friendship. <laughs> oh, there he is, driving up now. Oop. He may be particular about what he eats, but he isn't particular about what he hits. That was my car. I don't guess there was any damage. Nothing fell off. Oh, there you are, Throckmorton. Hello, Sidney. I want you to meet a good friend of mine, Mr. Peavy. Always glad to meet a friend of the commissioner's. How do you do, Mr. Peavy? I don't know. Do I go out front and look at my car? <laughs> oh, was that your car I hit? I'm not used to driving Throckmorton's yet. Back in Cincinnati, I drive a Jag. How's that? <laughs> a Jag, Peavy. Tell him what it is, Sid. It's an expensive English car. Expensive import. Get that, Peavy? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, now, what should we have for lunch, Throckmorton? Let's see. Uh, how's the spaghetti plate, Peavy? It's imported from Italy. Very expensive. <laughs> yes, yes. Shall we try it, Sidney? Yes. Perhaps Mr. Peavy will have lunch with us. I just cook. I don't eat here. <laughs> Two spaghettis, Peavy. Very well. Let me have the check, Mr. Peavy. Very well. No, don't pay any attention to him, Peavy. Give me the check. Very well. No, I insist. Give me the tab. No, Sidney, you're a guest in town. Just put it on my charge account, Peavy. Is that all right with you, Mr. Tuttle? Well, it's pretty hard to say no to Mr. Gildersleeve. You win again, Throckmorton. It's my pleasure. Mr. Peavy, is that candy fresh? Yes, I, I just unpacked it. I should take a box of that to sis. A wrap one, will you? Very well. Very thoughtful of you, Sidney. I was going to take her a box if you didn't. Oh, uh, Throckmorton. Yes? I'm terribly embarrassed, but I must have left my wallet at home. Where did you say home is, Cincinnati? <laughs> I mean my sister's apartment. Pardon me, Sidney, but isn't that your wallet sticking out of your pocket? Oh, yes, yes, this is my wallet, but I must have left my money on the dresser. Can you spare a five spot? What's that? He wants you to lend him five dollars. I hate to ask you, but... No, no, not at all. Here, Sidney. Thanks. Here you are, Mr. Peavy. And keep the change. Mm, thank you. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, while I'm in the drugstore, I should get some shaving lotions, razor blades, hair tonic, and uh, one of those electric clocks. Very yeah, well. Throckmorton, I'm not going to ask you to break out your wallet again. Good. Let's just put it on your charge account. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be right back. Christmas is right around the corner. And with it, all the gifts to wrap, the last-minute hustle, 
All the extra baking a holiday brings. Here's a wonderful way to bake Christmas cookies and cakes days ahead so that they're ready when you need them. You can actually bake days ahead if you bake with superfined craft oil. Baking tests, just made by the famous U.S. testing company, proved that craft oil, used as liquid shortening, will keep cakes absolutely fresh at least 72 hours. Craft and other leading oils were tested as liquid shortenings. And the cakes baked with craft oil stayed perfectly fresh for a full three days. Imagine, the cake you bake with craft oil will have that delicious, just-baked flavor, that fresh-from-the-oven texture for a full three days or more. Of course, that's true of cookies, too. Sounds unbelievable, you say. But there's a reason. The reason is that craft oil is a lighter-bodied oil. That means it blends better, more completely, with the ingredients of a cake batter. It blends so thoroughly that there's shortening in every last crumb of your baked beauties. No wonder cakes or cookies baked with craft oil will stay perfectly fresh so much longer. Tomorrow, get a bottle of craft oil. The famous name, Kraft, on this lighter-bodied oil is your guarantee of the finest baking results. the great Gildersleeve was elated when his girlfriend's brother came to town and took a fancy to him. Yes, sir, Mr. Sidney Tuttle turned out to be a cultured, traveled, and personable gentleman. The only trouble is he likes to spend Gildersleeve's money. Uh, let's see now, Bertie. I bought his lunch at Peavy's, and he borrowed five dollars from me to buy candy. Then, including the electric clock, he charged nine dollars to my account. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bertie. Why do you suppose he's doing all that to you if he's such a big shot from Cincinnati? You know, I hate to take snap judgments of people, Bertie, but I'm beginning to question that big shot business. Yes, sir. You made me go over and get my bike and pen from Mickey. Why don't you hop in the car and go get your money from Sydney? Well, he still has my car. <laughs> oh, brother, and you're the one who said you could spot him a mile off, didn't he, Bertie? That's what he said. Well, I'm on to him, but I can't do much about it. I don't want to hurt Miss Tuttle. She thinks her brother's perfect. Of course, she only sees him every few years. Well, if he decides to stay in town, Unc, you're probably the best job he ever had. Hey, Roy, he isn't going to get anything else out of me. <laughs> he isn't. From now on, my guard is up and my pocketbook is padlocked. Yeah? you got a club over you, Unc. What if he starts running you down to Miss Tuttle? Well? Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsey, you could be in a predicament. If you've got a good girlfriend with a no-good brother, and if the no-good brother tells your girlfriend that you no good, which a no-good brother could do, that's no good. <laughs> yes. You're right, Bertie. <laughs> no, I'll take it. There must be some way out of this situation. Hello? Mr. Gildersleeve, this is Mr. Peavy. Oh, yes, Peavy. Miss Tuttle's brother was in again. Oh? I thought you'd like to know that he bought you a box of cigars. He did? Well, Peavy, I'm afraid I misjudged Sidney. He said you were a good fellow. Sorry I ever doubted him. What else did he say? He said to charge his cigars to you. Oh! <laughs> George, I hate to disillusion Grace, but I must have a talk with her. She thinks her brother is a sincere, honest big shot. And I'm not going to let him get away with his tricks again. Besides, he has a right to know he misrepresents things. It'll be for her own good. I'll be diplomatic, but honest. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. May I come in a moment? Of course. Thank you. What's the matter, Throckmorton? Your face is flushed. Well, I had to walk all the way over here. Oh, Sidney does have your car, doesn't he? Yeah, and about that car of mine. You've been wonderful about it. He tells me you won't even let him buy gas for it. I won't? <laughs> I suppose you didn't want me to know about it, but there's one thing about Sidney. He gives credit where credit is due. I'm using my credit all over town. Uh, Sidney isn't home now, is he? No, he's downtown. He's probably at Peavy's shopping again. He'll be sorry he missed you. Oh, that's all right. He's so fond of you, Throckmorton. 
Well, I'm fond of him, too, but I'm glad he isn't here right now. I, I mean, I'd rather talk to you alone. Let's sit here. Good. We haven't had many chances to be together, have we? That is, just the two of us. No. I want you to know how much I appreciate your being so nice to Sidney. You know, now, about him. Isn't he a wonderful brother? How many brothers take their sister's candy? Grace, there are probably a lot of things you don't know about him. Well, he is terribly modest. He seldom speaks of his exploits. So far, he's exploited me for $14. <laughs> he's had some wonderful positions. Of course, he hasn't told me much about what he does, but he never fails to write just enough to let me know he's highly successful at it. Well, that sounds like Sidney. And, well, we're on the subject of Sidney. Oh, let's not talk about him now. Here, let me straighten your tie. It's out of kilter. Well. <laughs> there. Now you look very handsome. Thank you. But as I was about to say... And here's a carnation for your lapel. Sidney brought them. And by the way, he said the florist spoke very highly of you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful the way Sidney makes friends? It's remarkable. Of course, I have to thank you for introducing him around town. And I've been wondering what nice thing I can do for you. You have? Anyway, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. Oh? I'm going to give you a big kiss. <laughs> right on top of the head. <laughs> Grace? Yes? I want to do something nice for you. Oh? And your brother, of course. I want you and Sidney to come to dinner tonight. <laughs> Everything's set, Bertie? Yes, sir. I'm ready for him. After all you said about Sidney, Uncle, I can't get over you inviting him to dinner. Leroy, let me handle this. You to see that you're on your good behavior tonight. I always am. Now, I'm going upstairs and change my tie. Grace likes blue. And Sidney likes the long green, huh? <laughs> you know, young man. He may have a few faults, but Miss Tuttle thinks the world of him. So don't say anything out of line. Okay. He doesn't know he borrows his money. She thinks he makes it. Hey, maybe he does make it in the basement somewhere. <laughs> How do you like that, Bertie? He's nicked Unc for over $14 and he invites the guy for dinner. Leroy, your uncle can take a lot of punishment. Well, Sidney's not going to take Unc again. When he comes over tonight, I'm going to try to get Unc's money back. Leroy, you're playing in a pretty big league. Yeah. Uh-oh, there they are. You let them in. Bertie's got things to do in the kitchen. I'll be right down. Okay. i got to figure some way to get rid of Hunk. Good evening, Leroy. Hi, Miss Tuttle. Well, Leroy, how's the boy? Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Hunk will be right down. Here, I'll put your coats in the den. Good boy, Leroy. Well, Grace. And Sidney. Sorry, I wasn't at the door. Leroy's taking care of us. Hello, Throckmorton. Throckmorton, when we got out of your car, I noticed one of your tires is a little flat. <laughs> oh? Hey, Uncle, why don't you go out and see about it? Well, perhaps I'd better. Excuse me, Grace. Sidney, take our guests into the parlor, Leroy. Sure. Nice little place Throckmorton has here. Isn't it? Uh, Sidney, don't you think you should go out and help Throckmorton? Grace, dear, I don't know the first thing about changing a tire. Well, I wouldn't want you to anyway. Why don't you sit down? Yes, let's just relax. Quite an uncle you have there, Leroy. Yeah, uncle's tops. I've been trying to figure out a way to do something nice for him. Isn't that sweet? He's a wonderful man, Leroy. Yes, Rock Morton's top drawer. Does he have any cigars in the humidor? No, it's been empty for a couple of days. He said somebody was going to give him a box, but they haven't yet. Oh. Yeah, I've really got to do something nice for Uncle. Trouble is, I'm just a little kid, and I don't have enough money. Well, money isn't everything, Leroy. Well, not to a VIP like you. Now, that means very important person. I know. Thank you. Gosh. You've probably got more money than you know what to do with. Well... Sidney's one of those fortunate people. He says everything he touches turns to money. Yeah? Now, sis, there's nothing mysterious about my operations. Tell me, Mr. Tuttle... If you were a little kid who wanted to do something nice for a very good uncle and needed $14, how would you get it? Oh, in that case, I'd borrow it. 
I'd get it from someone close to me. Well, gosh, it's nice of you to suggest it, but I really don't know you that well. <laughs> what? Or do I? Uh, Sidney, why don't you lend Leroy $14? Me? Well, uh... <clears throat> oh, please do it for me. Well, of course, sis, if I have it with me. I'll just go in the den and look in my overcoat. Miss Tuttle, does your brother always carry money in his overcoat? Leroy, he finds money in the strangest places. Oh, gosh, Uncle won't like me borrowing from your brother, Miss Tuttle. He doesn't have to know about it, Leroy. If Mr. Tuttle wasn't the kind of fellow he is, I wouldn't ask for the loan. Well, Leroy, my boy, here's your $14. Oh, boy! Thanks, Mr. Tuttle. That's very sweet of you, Sidney. That's all right, sis. I'll never let you and Leroy down. Will you excuse me while I go put this money someplace? Go right ahead, Leroy. Now, I'll tell him to hurry up with the car, too. Hey, Unc. Yeah, I'm coming. I had to pump up the tire. Look, here's the money Sidney owes you. Leroy, how did you get it? I got ways. Yeah, I wish I could get the rest of it. There's more? He was just out here and borrowed fourteen dollars. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just thirty seconds. There's one way to make sure your pie crusts bake. Crisp and flaky every time. Use Kraft Oil. Naturally, the shortening you select has a lot to do with the texture of a pie crust. And the reason that Kraft Oil is a better liquid shortening is it's super fine. Super fining gives it lighter body to blend better with other ingredients. Tomorrow, get some Kraft Oil. It's the most wonderful oil ever created for baking and homemade salad dressings. <laughs> Yes, Miss Gilsey. Miss Tuttle and her brother are getting their wraps, and I'm going to drive them home. Yes, sir. That Mr. Tuttle certainly is a nice man. What's this, Bertie? I never heard a man say so many nice things about anybody's cooking. Well, that's his way, but I'm on to him. That's why I'm driving him home. I want to be sure to get my car back. Yes, sir. He borrowed it two days ago, and I haven't seen it since. Uh, he has no consideration for anybody. Uncle, I got a message for you from Mr. Tuttle. Oh, what, Leroy? He wants you to take his sister home in the car alone. He does? Yeah. He isn't even going with you. He says she's such a nice guy, you deserve a break. Well, what a considerate fellow. Uh, Leroy, how's he getting home? He's borrowing my bike. <laughs> Good night, folks. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Shipp, George Neese, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Neakin. This is John Easton saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC. NBC.